Hey, welcome back to the channel. So while I'm driving over to my next location, I figured we can take a couple minutes and I can uh, explain to you what I'm doing and also let you enjoy some of this really pretty scenery. So we are on our way to Tupper Lake, which along with Saranac Lake and Lake Placid, uh, make up the Tri-County or the, what do they call it? The Tri-Lakes area of the Adirondacks. So in addition to abandoned and dying places and things like that, uh, I also, uh, maybe surprisingly, maybe not, uh, am rather obsessed with the serial killer Israel Keys. And for those of you who are familiar with Keys, a lot of this will be information you are already familiar with, but for those who are not, the big mythology around him is that he uh, is one of the, you know, arguably one of the scariest serial killers, at least to have ever been caught, because he supposedly killed at random. Not only without a specific victim profile, but also without a specific uh, geography. So he buried uh, kill kits all over the country in places where he knew he might want to kill someone at a future date so that if the mood ever struck him, he could drive or fly into those locations, unbury uh, his kill kit, randomly find a, a target, uh, kill them, bury them, and then uh, get rid of the weapons again and flee the area before anyone, uh, anyone knew any better. Now, some of that mythology has been debunked at least a little bit, but you know a lot of it still holds true. He did bury kill kits all over the country, a bunch of which have been found. If you're interested, go look up the Samantha Koenig case from Anchorage, Alaska, which is the one that ultimately got him caught, or uh, Bill and Lorraine Courier from Essex, Vermont. That's the other one that he openly talked about in great detail, actually. And so one of the other victims that the FBI is now pretty well convinced was Keyes was the case of uh, Deborah Feldman. And so I should mention that what Keyes liked to do was kidnap someone from one state, uh, kill them in another state, and bury them in a third state so that uh, it muddied the jurisdictional waters and made things even more complicated uh, and all that. So uh, where we are going today is actually to check out a few locations related to what is believed to be uh, his Deborah Feldman uh, victim in that case. On April 9th, 2009, I believe, uh, Keyes flew from Anchorage, Alaska into Manchester, New Hampshire, checked into a hotel there, and then immediately drove to Hackensack, New Jersey, where he uh, allegedly kidnapped uh, Deborah Feldman, who I believe was a sex worker. He drove her up. So he, we're not sure where he killed her, but he has uh, said that he has buried her or he buried the New York victim, which is very likely Deborah Feldman, uh, a few miles outside of Tupper Lake. Uh, that was uh, April 9th and April 10th. So after, one of the things Keyes also liked to do was rob banks. After he murdered people, it would get him all jazzed up and amped up, and he would uh, use that energy and that momentum to go rob a bank. So um, the day after he uh, supposedly killed Deborah Feldman and buried her, he robbed the community bank in Tupper Lake. And so we are heading now to both check out a speculated spot where uh, I feel like Deborah Feldman has probably been buried uh, along the Raquette River. All we know is that Key said he buried her a few miles outside of Tupper Lake along the Raquette River. There's a boat launch right outside of Tupper Lake where it could be argued that Deborah Feldman's remains could be found somewhere along there. Keys had a thing for boat ramps and telephone poles and, and that as markers. And so uh, it's theorized that that may have been at least the location where Keys uh, 
launched off from or whatever to to bury Deborah Feldman. So I picked a bad time to be able to do this because there's a 99.99% chance that this uh, gravel road leading to the boat ramp or the boat launch is uh, not plowed and I'm not going to be trudging through the woods especially right off a main road like this so maybe we can just drive by and look at it real quick but then also a few miles uh, past that when we get into Tupper Lake is the bank that Keys robbed and there's actually a surveillance photo of Keys robbing the bank he's got this really goofy fake mustache and beard on he has a gun in one hand and a uh, like a note in the other hand and he said that he originally planned to give the note to the teller to kind of initiate the bank robbery but then he ended up pulling out the gun and then got confused about which method he wanted to use so he basically had this ransom note or this sort of give me all your money note along with a gun in his hand it's a really goofy picture um, but yeah so that one uh, we know that Keys did. However, the thing is, most people have the bank wrong. They think that it's the bank that is downtown, the community bank that is downtown in Tupper Lake. And I have checked with a couple of news sources and news articles from around that town, and or from around that time, that talk about which bank it is, and that's not the bank that he robbed. He robbed a bank that is farther outside of town. It's not a community bank anymore which is probably what has people thrown off. But like half an hour past Tupper Lake is where they actually found one of Key's kill kits. Uh, there are pictures all over FBI.gov of the kill kit that they found just a couple hundred feet from a boat ramp at the Blake Falls Reservoir. And so I figure I'm up here, so why not at least come and check out whether or not that kill kit location is accessible. Yeah, so it's down, right down there, and as I thought, it's not at all plowed. But yeah, it is speculated that right down here along the Raquette River is where Israel Keys uh, potentially buried the remains of Deborah Feldman. So for any Keys fans, that's just kind of trippy to see that. And yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go back there. So now we are going to uh, continue on and try to find this community bank. But yeah, Racket River boat launch site. So yeah. It's crazy you see these places and without context they don't really mean anything but then if you think about the fact i mean at the very least israel keys was up here all the time he was very familiar with this area uh so much so that he buried a kill kit up here so i mean that alone if you allow yourself to do it makes things kind of creepy here's the raquette river here so somewhere along this river somewhere Right around in here, the remains of one of uh, Israel Key's victims is buried. Super trippy stuff. But let's see where this uh, former community bank is as we enter the town of Tupper Lake here. So I know it's a building off to the left here that's at an intersection that I believe it's vacant now, if I'm not mistaken. So, maybe it's at this stop later. This is not it. Oh, yes it is. Oh, yes, this is it. So, this, yeah, this is it. So, this is the former community bank as you can see there's signs on the front there that say the community bank has moved and is located at 75 park street whatever so yeah this is the bank <clears throat> or what was a bank that israel key is robbed in which you have that photo of i uh, right after 
he uh, kidnapped and killed and buried uh, what's believed to be Deborah Feldman. All right, so I just plugged the coordinates into into the GPS for the uh, Blake Falls Reservoir Kill Kit, and it says it's 45 minutes. That's way too far. So let's go into Tupper Lake here real quick, and we can at least look at the community bank and maybe you see Tupper Lake a little bit, but I don't think I'm going to be going all the way up to Blake Falls Reservoir in this. Because there's no way that it's plowed. It's apparently off a dirt road, which is miles long, et cetera, et cetera. So I think I'm going to have to keep uh, <laughs> keep that one as a uh, maybe later. If I ever come up here again, weird, creepy bucket list item. Well, it is the next day and I told you that I had a mild obsession uh, with Israel Keys. So I am on the hunt today for the Blake Falls Reservoir Kill Kit location uh, that was already found, but I just want to see if I can find the rock formation where it was actually found. Uh, because after yesterday's uh, adventure, I went back to the hotel and I uh, couldn't stop thinking about how I'm likely not going to be in this area uh, again anytime soon. So I am now, uh, as you saw, driving uh, about what, half an hour, 40 minutes or so north, northwest-ish of Tupper Lake. And supposedly like five-ish miles from the location of this kill kit at the, uh, where it was found at the Blake Falls Reservoir. And even if we don't find the exact location, the exact rock formation. I mean, it might have gotten torn down for all I know. I'm not totally sure. Uh, we will at least know that we're right in the area where uh, Israel Keys frequented enough times to be comfortable burying a kill kit. So uh, I'm about to, uh, in like a quarter mile, a quarter mile here, turn on Stark Road. And this is the one that I thought might not be plowed. So, um, we will see. And yeah, it's not, this isn't great. So actually with how deep this is, um, I don't really trust myself not to get stuck here. Plus that, so I need to turn on this road, then I need to turn on an even less frequented road um yeah i'm not i'm i'm in the boonies so i'm going to actually turn around and uh not mess with this because i do not want to get stuck out here so uh <clears throat> i brought you along so you can see me yet again wimp out and call it quits instead of attempting to go down that road which is the better of the uh, of the options so uh, we will continue the video <laughs> yesterday so uh, yeah there it goes so I don't know if you find this kind of stuff interesting if there's any I feel like there's a little bit of crossover between like the abandoned stuff and like serial killer points of interest if you are interested in starting down the Israel Keys uh, rabbit hole uh, I highly recommend checking out True Crime BS, which is a, uh, a podcast run by Josh Hallmark, who has done the most amazing, in-depth, uh, validated research on keys oh, I mean, anywhere that I've been able to find. So, I mean, he is sort of my go-to when it comes to really getting detailed information. So I think we're going to leave it at that. There's that community bank. So as I'm uh, heading back to Lake Placid, uh, I realized I should probably close the gap on the Israel Keys story. Israel Keys got caught and arrested in Texas in March, February or March of 2012 for uh, the uh, Samantha Koenig case, which you can read about if you want. 
So he was in FBI custody for six-ish months, eight-ish months, uh, until December of that year. And he gave hours and hours and hours and hours of uh, interviews to the FBI that the majority of which were recorded and have been released. You can find them on YouTube. But uh, things started to devolve in the conversations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And in uh, December, I don't remember when it was, December something of 2012, he was mistakenly uh, given a uh, razor in his cell and he subsequently uh, killed himself in his cell. He left a suicide note that is, you could, it, it's arguably like nonsensical jargon. I'm sure it's a keys, it meant a lot, but it's not terribly helpful uh, with, with anything and not terribly insightful. He also wrote some stuff on the wall of his cell too and all that, but uh, unfortunately, uh, in terms of resolving cases, keys is gone. So in case you're wondering, well, is he in jail? Did he get caught? Uh, did he get out? Like, what's going on? Yeah, he, he killed himself six or eight months after getting caught. So there's that. End to the Israel Keys story. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Israel Keys, taking this little sidebar with me. Uh, if you're interested in the Keys stuff at all, uh, True Crime BS, that podcast is a great place to start. And there's endless hours of content everywhere else across the internet. So you know the drill, like button, subscribe button, notifications, leaving a comment, any sort of interaction helps support the channel. I appreciate the support as always, and until next time, I will talk to you soon. All right, bye.